Hello designers, welcome back to another video on Design Extreme. In our today's video, we're gonna see how you can animate an object on a particular path in Figma. So we're gonna look at different scenarios, whether it's actually possible in Figma and what is the best way to do it and to what extent it's possible. And also we'll be looking at two methods, that is one is without using any plugins and one is with using a plugin, which makes this whole process way easier. So without any further ado, let's jump straight onto my screen and get started. So here I'm on my Figma file and as you can see, I have a couple of frames here. So first one is the object that I want to animate and these are some example parts to show you how this works. In this first case, I just have a zigzag line and it's point to point, right? And the other one is a curved line. So let's see an example with both of these. So there'll be different scenarios, but let's have a look at this and I'll explain you to what extent it's possible. So the first one is a zigzag line, right? So I just took the pen tool and I created a zigzag path like this. So this is gonna be pretty simple. So I just created a path like that and we are gonna look at how we can animate this object on this path. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one and show you how this works. So I'll just copy the plane image from here come to this frame and I'll just paste it so there can be two types of objects right one is like it doesn't have a direction to it so for example if you just take a ball which is just circle it can just animate like this and it doesn't have to change the you know the rotation of but when it comes to a plane uh, once it comes to this area so let me just so once it's like this and it comes let's say it comes to this angle it has to rotate to this angle and then move to the other point right so there can be these two type of scenarios but uh, the principle is going to be the same how it works so I'm just going to place it right here and we're going to create frames right it is going to animate frame by frame and that is how it happens with smart animate in figma so let's see how we can do this so first i'm going to place it at the very beginning of the point and i'm going to click on the frame and so for that i'm just going to use command d or control d on windows so that will duplicate a frame and in this particular frame i'm going to select the plane and move it to the next point so it's basically going to come to this point right here and once it comes here it basically has to rotate so that it can follow the path on the next angle We'll place it at this angle and just duplicate it once again. So I'm going to select the frame, command D, it duplicates it, right? So in this particular frame, I'm going to rotate it. It is going to follow this path right here. So this is your first starting point. Then it goes to the next point. Then it has to rotate and we'll follow the same process again, right? So I'm going to select this frame, duplicate it. And now it's going to follow this path, come to this part. And now again, duplicate it, rotate the angle, you know, follow this process for the complete all the points. So I'm just going to fast forward this part. And this is your last frame. So I'm going to select the plane and, you know, just move it outside the frames okay there you go i have created all these frames with different you know points where the plane comes it rotates and it goes to the next point right so this is how you create the states for it or the frames for it and now we can just simply start adding the animations to it so i'll move on to the first frame right here select the frame go to prototype and from here i'm going to select this point drag an interaction to the next frame so the settings are going to be after delay you want to use after delay because you want this animation to have automatically without you know any intervention or any trigger like an on click or uh, on drag or something like that. So it has to be after delay and for the minimal time, you have to leave it at one millisecond and then set this at smart animate. So it's animating through this path, right? So make sure always the animation is at linear or else you'll see that it speed ends up and then it lows down at a point. So if you want a constant motion, it has to be in linear. And you know, let's leave this at 500 milliseconds. So from here to here, it moves at 500 milliseconds. And from here to here, basically it's just a rotation of, right? So it has to be quicker. So this one is gonna go to the next frame with again an after delay of one millisecond, but this time it is quite quicker, right? So I'll leave this at 50 milliseconds to rotate the angle and this one is going to be the same as the first one so this one to the next frame after delay of one millisecond but this time at 500 milliseconds it's going to come to this point just repeat the same settings for the rest of the frames i'll just fast forward this part and yeah, this is the last frame. And if you can see the last frame is quite short, right? The distance it has to travel is quite short. So for that reason, I'm gonna keep this quite faster. So I'll just leave it at 300 milliseconds compared to the other one where it was 500 milliseconds, you know, just to maintain that constant speed in the animation. So that was the last frame and make sure you set the last frame back to the first frame so that you can see this happen in an infinite loop. So this one can be instant. So I'll just leave this to, you know, instant in instead of smart animate and the settings look good, but it, it should be after delay at one millisecond that looks fine and now let's play this and see how it looks right so i'm going to select the first frame hit on shift and there you go you can see the preview okay it stopped there that is probably because i forgot to place an after delay so let's see the last frame right here you can see i've set it at on click the mistake i made so i'll set it at after delay one millisecond and now it should look fine so i'm going to select the first frame and there you go you can see how it starts animating in a path right so that is how we can uh, apply a path animation for a zigzag point to point 
and also you can remove this path once you're done with it if you don't want it right so if i select all these frames go to design and i'll change the black color of this to zero and now your path is gone so i'll see the preview again so that's how we can animate a point to point animation so i'll just turn this off now let's look at a complicated example which is a curve right so how do you do with this with a curve so that is a big question uh, which a lot of people have so let me just duplicate this one once again and copy the plane from here with this particular frame so let's say if i had to do a frame by frame animation i'll have to duplicate this i'll, I'll select the plane bring it to this point and you know turn it slightly again duplicate it bring it here rotate it slightly and i'll have to do this for each of the path right and even if i do this it doesn't look smooth right so that is why this method doesn't work just for this particular small curve probably you'll have to create like 20 to 30 frames which is not a, a good solution right so what we're going to do here is we are going to use a hack to set an anchor point for the plane right here or the object right here and how are we going to do that so let me just delete this bring in our actual plane object so i'm just going to place it here and we are going to draw a rectangle around this so i'm just going to use the rectangle tool and draw a frame around this we have a frame let's keep the width of the plane and this so this is 218 and I'm going to leave this at 218. And the next thing is let's have a stroke for this and remove the fill so that we can actually see the plane. So I'm going to remove the fill and just keep the stroke and I'm going to align it. So there we go. We have this uh, aligned to the middle and to the top. And now uh, once you have this rectangle and the plane, just select both of them and group it, right? So once I group it, if I start rotating this, you can see that the anchor point of this plane has changed, right? Or else if I remove this and if I try to rotate this, you can see it doesn't go in this particular path, right? But if I group both of these and then start rotating the main group, you can see that it follows a particular path, right? So this is the hack that we're going to use so that we can animate this plane on this path, right? So once you have this set, what you got to do is, you know, just place place it on this particular thing and set the angle right so the initial point rotate it and make sure it matches the angle that you want so this is the angle that I want as you can see it looks fine but now let's try to rotate it right so if I start rotating it you can see that it doesn't follow this path that is because this is quite short so the next thing you want to do is select the path that you have right here or the rectangle and just increase its height right keep increasing it and then start testing it so I'll just select the group again and start rotating it so it's better right it's better Pre previously just turned from here now it's better so again I select the rectangle, increase the height of it. Now I'm going to select the group once again and let's try to rotate it. And as you can see, it pretty much follows the path up to this point. And at this point, it, the curve basically takes a different path. So we can leave it at this point and it looks pretty fine. It follows the path that I wanted. So at this point, I'm going to leave it. So now that we have that, let's duplicate this frame once again. And in the second frame, I'm just going to rotate it to the angle that it was looking fine. So up to here, it looks fine. So I'm going to leave it at this point. So now we have this go at this particular path, which looks good. Now let's try to create the next frame so I'm just going to duplicate it once again but now if I want to rotate it it doesn't follow the path anymore right so if I start rotating it it takes a u-turn and it comes back so that is not what we wanted to happen we want this to take the next curve right so for that reason I'm just going to select the rectangle that we have right here and now we'll start moving it to the other end right so I'm just moving it to the other end and so that it matches the exact uh, left of this one so now we have moved it and now if I select the group once again and I start rotating it you can see that it follows the next path right but uh, uh, you can see that it's slightly off that is because the rectangle that we have is too big so for that reason i'm going to select the rectangle once again and reduce its height so i select the group once again right now so it's almost fine i just have to increase it slightly so i'm just going to increase it slightly right select the group once again and start rotating it so that was perfect. So now we have the height and the anchor point to be working fine. And for that reason, I'm just going to leave this frame as it is. Just duplicate it once again. And in this frame, this particular rectangle and bring it totally out of the frame. Plane is leaving the frame. So here we have the different states ready. And now all we got to do is just, you know, set the animations for it. So for that reason, I'm just going to select the first frame, link it to the next one, use the same settings that we used previously. So after delay of one millisecond, and this is going to be smart animate. And let's leave this at 500, which seems to be good and here there's a small difference right so from this frame to this frame it is just that the box is moving which shouldn't be visible to the user so for that reason i'm going to select this one to the next frame and in this case it's going to be after delay one millisecond going to happen as instant you don't want the user to notice this this is something a uh, kind of a hack that we are using in the background for our animation to work this step to this step is something that the user shouldn't see so once that is done from here to the next frame is something that the user has to see which is again after delay of one millisecond and this 
one has V Smart Animate 500, which looks good. And finally, the last frame to the first frame so that it loops completely. So after delay of one millisecond, again, play this and see how this works. Hopefully it should be good. So there you go, following the path that you wanted to follow, right? And uh, like I said, we don't want this rectangle to be visible. This is just for our reference that we created it. So I'm just gonna select all these rectangles right here, opacity to zero so that the rectangle is not there. There you go, guys, you have this, you know, plane following a particular curve that we wanted to follow. And the other thing, again, let me just select all of these and, you know, remove the path as well. So let's see how that looks. So now we don't have the path, the reference path that we wanted. Review it again. It's quite fast. What, what you can do is, you know, increase the animation time here. Now thousand should be good. And this one to this one as well at or 900 because this is a shorter path. You have this plane taking this curve. So that was a small hack in Figma with which you can, you know, animate certain things on a certain curved path as well in Figma without using any plugins. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, if you had to do this frame by frame, it would take you a lot of frames. Even the animation wouldn't be smooth, right? So this is a small hack that you can use, but even this doesn't work with all the different scenarios, right? Let's say you have a very complicated curve, then you'll have to create multiple frames again. So this works in certain cases where your path is quite simple and, you know, it's easy to animate just using this hack. But let's say you had to do for a complicated path or even this particular path without using all these frames. What you can do is you can use this uh, plugin called as motion. So I'm just going to duplicate these frames that we have the path in. So now we have the path and now we have the plane as well. So let's open the plugin that we have. So the plugin is called as motion. So just search for plugin motion and here we have it. Just going to select it and there we go. The plugin has opened. So I'm just going to select the frame right here and start a new file. So there we have it. So the first thing you have to do is select the object that you want to animate. So I just select the object right here and here you have an option called as add path so just click on this and it'll ask you to basically select the path that you want the object to animate in so in this case i'm going to select the path that we have created so i'll just click on this and say okay and automatically you can see that the object gets set to the beginning point of the path and the next thing is you want to set the duration for it so in this plugin you have an option for going up to two seconds in the free plan so i'm just going to set it to two seconds at the maximum right here okay and once you do that i just click on play that's it your animation is ready right it was so easy you didn't have to create multiple frames and this just did the job. So let's also look at uh, how we can do it for the curve path. Let's see how that works. So I'm going to select a new project and I'm going to select this particular frame right here. Again, I'm going to select the plane that is the object that we have and then select on this option, which is add path. And in this case, we're going to select the path as this one. Click on OK. And the plane is automatically set to the starting point. And again, I'm going to set the duration to, let's say, two seconds. So you didn't have to do anything. It just did the job for you. The angle of the rotation, like uh, making sure sure the head of the plane is always in the path. You didn't have to rotate it uh, for each frame. It just did the job, right? So this is an easy way to do it. You can just have this plugin and, you know, select the object, select the path, and this can handle even complex uh, paths as well, right? So for example, if I had a complicated path like this, doing it with the hack that I mentioned is also actually not possible. So in that case, see how this plugin performs. So we have the plane image right here. So I'll just set the angle back to zero. So always make sure your object is pointing to the right or else it will not work as you want it to work. So make sure your angle is always towards the right. So once again, I select the object right here that we want to move. I hit on add path. Now it's asking me to select the path. So select the path that it on OK and it has automatically set it to the first. I'll select the animation right here, set the duration to two seconds. Perfect, right? So you can see how seamlessly it's moving with the angle and the rotation. And that's how you can create, uh, you know, path animations in Figma using this plugin. Or else you can use the hack that I mentioned for simple animations or simple curves. And that's it for this video. I hope you found this helpful. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.